Righto guys, to start with I think one of the most important things to talk about is the major differences in your riding position between show jumping and cross country. For me, I love it for cross country if I could just get my, my stirrup leathers a tiny bit shorter than show jumping length. Now if I'm on a real baby baby young horse or a green one, I'd probably leave them the same length as show jumping. But for a horse that's sort of moving up the levels that you're quite confident with, I love going up either one hole or half a hole. For me, the best way to figure this out uh, over the years is if you drop your legs out of the stirrups and you sort of wiggle your legs, I feel the, the bar of the stirrup just bumping my, above my ankle bone. You know, the bone at your ankle, the, uh, the pedal of the stirrup just sort of touches me slightly above that ankle bone. The next major difference would be the length of rein. For me, I love show jumping in a slightly shorter rein. I just feel like it gives me a great position, keeps me with my animal. The big problem with cross country and having a short rein is that we need to be in an elevated galloping position, but then we also might need to get behind the horse. And if you've got a short rein, you seem to sort of yank the horse back in its mouth. So to me, I love to just lengthen my rein a little bit almost to the, the point of the horse's wither. I've still got the same connection, the same feeling to my horse's mouth. The only difference is my arms aren't out and ahead of me, they're a little bit lower. What this does is it allows me to go into this sort of galloping position, allows me to sink into the horse's saddle, and it also allows me to sort of get behind the motion on a drop fence or a fence where I feel like I've got to put my, uh, put, put my position behind the motion. So I think it's really, really important that we don't fall into this trap of show jumping our way around the cross country. Cross country is definitely related to show jumping, but it's also a completely different sport. Now I want to discuss the galloping position. If you think about the sport of cross country riding, there's speed, endurance and stamina involved in cross country. What we've got to try and do is ride our horse in a very, very efficient way, in a way that's easy for the horse to gallop and cover the ground. And we're trying to make it as least exhausting as possible. For me, trying to get off the horse's back and try and feel like your body weight's slightly above the horse's shoulder and wither. I feel like if I'm up in this position here, the horse is, I'm sort of over the horse, the horse isn't carrying me on his back. Obviously everyone's got a slightly different galloping position, but to me if you're in this position here, your body weight's really over the horse's back, and I feel like this labors your animal, especially after a long distance, the horse is really carrying your, your uh, balance. With this galloping position, it's important that we're not too upright. If you get to this place here, often you sort of lose your balance and you clunk back in the saddle. And I even see top, top riders doing this cross country. So you've got to try and elevate your position above the horses with her. And then I'd almost lean forward and rest my knuckles on the horses with her. Now I'm not completely sure if this is correct, but it's what I do. And I find burying my knuckles into the horses with her it sort of gives me one more point of balance. And galloping a long distance, I'm sort of locked in with both legs and I'm sort of pushing my knuckles into the horse's um, lower neck or his wither. And I find that I'm very, very stable even though my body weight's over the horse's wither. The most common fault that I see in galloping is, is people thinking they're in the correct position and they're actually galloping along and their backside sort of thumping the horse's back. And you've got to think to yourself, every time your bum hits the horse's back, it's, it's tiring, it's, it's, uh, it's exhausting your horse. And yeah, for sure at a beginner novice or a novice level, you can probably ride like this and it's not going to make much of a difference. But once you get to the higher levels, it definitely has an accumulative effect if you're even thinking about having a fresh horse for the next day in the show jumping. And at the end of the day, guys, as we discussed earlier, your result on paper doesn't necessarily mean you rode well. 
Uh, we want to have a great result, we want to have a great score, a great placing, and we want to be one of those riders that make it look great, easy for our horse, smooth, soft, and a pleasure to watch. Right, well, guys, so to start with, I wouldn't go into a high speed. I think to work on your galloping position, you sort of want to be in just a nice, easy canter. We can add a little bit of pace later. So the first thing I want you to try and do is almost straighten your leg a little bit and it's going to feel like you're almost over the ears of the horse. What we're trying to do is have clear daylight between your backside and the saddle. And eventually what we want to try and work on is that if we want to accelerate a little bit like this, we're all almost going to get taller and more forward. And then if we want to steady, we're going to just ever so gently elevate our body, but still stay quite light. What, what we've got to try and not do, which is the common fault, is sort of be bouncing in the back. So your body's forward, but you're sort of cantering along, um, hitting the horse's saddle. So we've got to try and almost straighten your knee joint, have your eyes up, and it's, a, it's almost a really good balance. Now, as, as we make turns, especially sharp turns, you want to try and feel like you're lowering your, your, uh, your center of gravity. So if I was going to make a tight turn, I'd just try and get a little bit lower to my horse, get a little bit closer to his back, and feel like my body weight is a little bit closer. And then when I want to accelerate, I'm going to lighten my seat and go faster like this. The, the name of the game is trying to slow down and accelerate, very light position. And we're trying not to, not to kick to go faster and not to pull to go slow down. Just ever so gently trying to lower and lengthen our body to change the rhythm and the speed. To me, the best riders in the world, doesn't matter what sport you're doing, dressage, show jumping, cross country, steeplechase, the good riders are almost feeling like they're doing, they almost look like they're doing nothing. And the, the name of the game, guys, is to practice this, is trying to encourage your horse to accelerate, steady, balance, turn left, turn right, turn right with the least amount of pulling and kicking and yanking uh, that's possible. And I'm very lucky with this horse, Charm. He's very light in the mouth and he's a little bit spooky, so I can sort of use that to my uh, advantage and just practice trying to think of sort of staying tall and elevating my position off his back to accelerate, sinking down and getting closer to his spine to steady. And that's the art of riding fast in cross country, trying to make it look effortless. All right guys, so obviously in cross country, there's uh, banks, there's drops, there's hills, there's mounds, there's slippery ground. The biggest thing I think you could th always think of is trying to stay in constant balance with your horse. Obviously going up a bank, the worst thing you could do is sort of get left behind as the horse is going up. It's counterintuitive. Uh, so I never want to see anyone practicing that move. And to me, if you can think of the physics of your horse going up a bank, if you're trying to stay with your horse all the time. So as he makes a jump up, I'll actually grab hold of a little mane and stay with him going up the bank. Going down the bank, obviously the worst thing that could happen is the horse sort of leaps in and you pop forward and land over the top of him. So to me, going down a drop, especially into water, I'll lengthen the rein and try and stay behind the motion. And in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking that my horse might stumble or trip 
I want to try and be in a slightly defensive position that if something should go wrong, that I'm not going to pop forward and lose my balance. Uh, for anyone practicing this at home, I love doing this exercise in walk. Even with my top, top horses, there's no adrenaline involved. There's no mental momentum uh, involved. It's just complete understanding of what the horse has to do eventually in the canter. And you could do a slightly bigger one here, grabbing a bit of mane, staying forward. And then again, going down the drop into water. I don't want him to jump in and leap in. I'm going to lengthen my rein, stay back. And it's usually like two or three strides after you land is where you feel this, uh, feel this moment where you pop forward. Let's give it a go in canter. Now the best position, the best takeoff distance for an up bank out of canter would be a little bit of a, a balanced deep distance. So I'm trying to almost ride it like a, uh, a show jumping, uh, a vertical in the show jumping. So it's a little bit of a steady ride, jumping up. And then going down the drop, I don't want, I almost want him to come back and almost hesitate in. So I'm going to just encourage him to almost trot at the end. And trying to stay in balance. And guys, as we, um, and guys, as we discussed earlier, a big key to this is repetition. So repetition for the rider to just consistently put yourself in that balance, that secure position, and also repetition for the horse. He understands that when he sees an up bank out of water, this is not a galloping jump, this is a balance jump. When he sees a, a down drop into water, again, this is not a, a fence that he's gonna race at, he's actually gonna pause and sort of hover in. All right guys, I think the next part of my uh, training session here is going to be this gymnastic exercise. I love bounces. I feel like it's a, it's a real great gym exercise for the horse. But today the, the primary reason for putting the bounces out here is to try and demonstrate the, the balance and the security with my position. Obviously when you've got a combination or a series of gymnastic exercises, what we're trying to do is trying to stay in a really even balance with our horse between the jumps and trying to stay in what I call a neutral position. For me, if I can be hugging my horse with my lower leg, really gripping him with my calf, my body position a little bit over his shoulder, sort of not left behind and definitely not ahead of him. So I feel like as he's jumping uh, through the exercise, I'm sort of in perfect balance and which makes it very easy uh, for this horse to carry me through the exercise. The last thing I'd say too is, if you've ever watched uh, uh, the tight walk roper, the, the guy that walks the tight rope between two buildings, he always has his eyes at the horizon, like he never looks down when he's walking the high wire. And I want you to think about that too when you're going through an exercise, is if I can lock my, size, my eyes on something uh, at eye level straight ahead, that sort of holds my body position straight, where if you look down, you seem to pop forward. Uh, looking up's not too much of a problem, but um, I feel like if you can lock your eyes on something straight ahead, it does hold your position in a, a really stable way. And this obviously is uh, creating strength, balance, and it's also trying to create stability for when you're competing uh, through combinations at the competition. So first things first, I'm gonna make sure this horse jumps through here. So I have a little bit of leg, tall upper body, long approach, and I'm looking for a good ride to part A. And then looking up now. Boy. And then continue looking up at your marker on the departure of the fence, trying to hold your position. Now this is a demonstration of getting left behind or moving behind and 
So this would be a rider that is behind the motion. And you can see how that inhibits the jump. And then a rider that gets ahead of the motion and looking down is just as bad. And again, I'll try and finish on a bit of correctness. A nice balance. Good shot at the red fence here. And eyes up, still eyes up, looking straight ahead. And to me, when you're, you're riding these gymnastic, gymnastic exercises, I love it because your job is to deliver the horse to the first part of the gymnastic in a good way, in a good balance, and a good distance. Then the rest is up to the horse. You can really focus on your own balance, your own strength, and really make sure that you're in a correct position. And I find I'm a bit of a visual learner. Like I'd often get uh, whoever's helping me set the fences to video me. And sometimes I, watching myself on video, I can actually learn a lot more than having an instructor yell something out. I don't know why that is, but I, if I see something, it, it has a, a bit more of an impact. So I'd recommend that to any of you riders out there, especially if you're doing this exercise and not getting coached, you can be your own coach.